First thing on a Monday morning in an almost sunny Liverpool, sitting in a cafe now, getting ready to meet up with the MMA 2017 breakout star of the year, Mr. Darren the Gorilla Till. We're going to head down to his natural environment, Team Calbon, but also, more importantly, it's time to see who the man is behind the fella that walked into the octagon. I was lucky enough to commentate on a number of his fights over the last couple of years, and he's blown me away. So now, we get to go and see how it all comes together for him. What's he really like when he's not strolling around the octagon knocking people out? Okay, we've arrived at Team Cowboy here in Liverpool. I've been wanting to visit this gym for the longest time when I started in mixed martial arts. The guys from this gym were absolutely smashing it. They've produced champions, guys that have fought at the very highest of the game in mixed martial arts. Today, of course, we're going to be meeting with Darren Till. He's going to be working in there in about 15 minutes. So I'm going to go through, see how it's all set up. A lot of history here. We've had seven or eight guys now in the UFC. All born on these mats. So Darren's a, a little late to the gym this morning. He realised he had a dentist appointment. So I've had a message, made me chuckle. Bless him, he's apologised. Uh, and he's, he's got no car, he's on the bus. He's on the bus on his way down. Got the emoji as well. It's always the superstars. <laughs> Sorry about that, mate. Oh, mate, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> Pays for like four grand to get all my teeth on, he's just drilled all holes and all that. Oh, mate. The fuck on that, and he chipped that and everything, mate. It's fucked. Painful? Like, painful, I've got like this temporary ear, but I'm not gonna put it in. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, so I'll just put it in for the camera, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Are you training? Are you yeah, doing anything? No, I can't do anything, so. Yeah. I'll just be to home now. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, you go in, mate. You do what you need to do. A handful of teeth. Nice. Okay, now who'd be a fighter, right? I just feel like I don't know where, uh, like, not that my life's changed because my life's still normal. John knows I've got, I got the fucking bus to come and see you this morning, you know what I mean? Like, the scouts are through, scouts signing autographs on the back of the bus. Were you really? <laughs> oh, fuck it, that would have been brilliant. I'd love to have seen that. <laughs> but, like, when Sir only accepted the fight, it's like he didn't give a fuck who I was and that and this. Yeah. I'm just this unknown and then from the unknown to the known sort of, that's what I feel like has happened. Like, you know, because it's not like every so often when Dana posts on his Instagram the future of a... He never even done that with Conor, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, it's just mad like, really. It's just, I feel like, I feel like I should, I, I, I should be uh, forever grateful to Sir only. After the fight anyway, you'd always... I think respect's a big part anyway, and you know you've got to have so much respect. I mean, did you watch Two Twenty the weekend? Did you? Yeah. Steep, eh, man. I stayed out. He, he's naughty. He's a naughty dude. Took some hit. I mean, he's just so smart. Yeah. But people are giving Francis shit. That's his first five round fight, mate. He'll learn from that. Do you know what I mean? It, it's not every fight that you can just come in and just knock someone straight out. You know what I mean? Like he still, he was leaping forward with that left yeah. hook. Wait well, on the fight now, if that lands. No, if it lands, but this is the problem. This is the fight what I talked about with Perry as well, because Perry's got the knockout power. It won't always work for you, and you're going to get a guy who's more... In like, you know about fighting more than me, probably, John. I don't know yeah, you're going to get a guy who's more intelligent, and you're leaping with them shots. There was no footwork from Ngannou. There was just that big, crazy punch. And he's expecting, thinking, every time I land that, I'm going to knock people out. But what if you get a guy like Stipe, where you can't land it on, yeah. then you get beat? One thing that Dan and I always talk about is how forgiving MMA is with four ounce gloves. Like you don't need the best technique. No, but it doesn't have to be like you're a technician and you have the power. I but, pride myself on being a technician. But there are guys that 
don't throw kicks correctly. They don't eagle. set their shit down here. Yeah, you go through the. Uh, what, the bus lane? Yeah, it's Don't worry, mate. Everyone does it. <laughs> I do it. I go through red lights. <laughs> I get more parking tickets. Uh, you go right here, mate. And a fully branded up. I'm, you know, Darren Till sponsored by VW yeah, car. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so. Although Francis, he does have good technique, but if he hits you with the side of his forearm, you're no, going to sleep. He, mate, he's a really, really good fighter. Like, I really, I think he is going to be heavyweight champ as well. Okay. But, like, what do you think differently? Don't you think he's going to be champ? I just, Stipe's not an old guy, is he? No. So, yeah, maybe. Maybe. I'm, I'm waiting for Kane's return. Yeah. I'm not a fan of anyone. I'm a fan of Kane. There's two people in the UFC I'm fans of, Khabib and Kane. And it's, and I love that because they don't, they don't have your style. Nope. See that? Yeah. Isn't that? Because I respect wrestling so yeah, much. Because you know how challenging it is it, to me, integrate that to your I've, game. I've fought boxing. I've fought Muay Thai, K1, obviously MMA. There is no sport, if you could call it a sport, on this earth like wrestling. It is literally where you d divide the men from the boys. Honest right. to God, like. Wrestlers are so fucking tough mentally and they and they can bang as well. It's like because they're so strong, you know. Like, this is yeah. Take a beating, this is yeah. why I respect them. Like you know, I can beat them all, but I respect them. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's like to me, why a Tyron is the champion because of that background. Because he's just such a fucking powerful dude, you know, mm. through the wrestling and that. Mm. And it's like you know. But yeah, they, they haven't got none of my style, Khabib or King. In fact, Khabib's stand-ups are, like, if I have to say so, awful. Like, I think it's terrible. They've It's just scrappy. They've managed to kind of work it well, though. Yeah, so adapted to they, what he's, they, he is. embraced some of the crazy stuff he does. So, I mean, I think if Conor fought Ferguson, I think Conor wins. I think Ferguson is an awesome fighter. I think everything yeah. what he does is great. But I think Conor wins because I think just on the feet, Ferguson's too sloppy. Now, I think if Khabib fights Conor, I think Khabib wins. But Khabib's got to be careful because Johnson clipped Khabib. Did, did you see yeah. that? Yeah. If Conor clips Khabib, Conor will knock Khabib stone dead like because he bangs, mate, at, yeah. at, at a lightweight. One thing that I was talking to Conor about, and it's, a, it's an obvious comparison in, in many ways, but it's just easy as a benchmark. But Connor's rise to fame and stuff, and you're you're experiencing a taste of, of what that's like. Yeah. And you've come from, as you said earlier, you you've gone from, you know, being known around here, but maybe not internationally. Yeah. So all of a sudden, everyone's talking about. Everyone it. knows me. Yeah. How do you how do you deal with that? How do you deal with that level of exposure and now all of these interactions? Yeah. Do you feel like you've got to be talking to all these fans? Are you just sitting there letting it chill? I try to reply as many people as possible, but as you know, like, it's hard, you can't reply to everyone. Otherwise, you'd need many people working for you. Yeah. And I don't really want anyone controlling my, my social media. I want it to be me, because then it comes from me, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Staying that my brain, mate. So, like, I just I just keep telling myself, I just think it's good to just keep telling myself, keep your feet on the ground, just just stay humble and stay, like, the same person you was when you, you were born basically don't ever get ahead of yourself right because as much as you're going to be at the top mate you're going to be at the, the bottom do you know what i mean so mm. like don't fucking don't like don't don't piss on anyone while you're going up yeah is to say because when you're down they piss on you like so mm. just be nice to everyone you know what i mean like yeah you, know, you get some people who just find a bit of fame and that and they just think that I don't know, do you think that the world owes them a favour and that everyone should just do stuff for them? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, no yeah. one's getting my coffees for me. I'm, I, that's unacceptable staying on the left, mate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no one's running around getting coffees for me. I, like, I even hate it when the waiters in, in, in restaurants, you know, they put your glass down, they try to pour your, your Coke in your glass. Feel. I'm like, yeah. no, I can do that myself. You yeah. just, yeah. You, 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 <laughs> you're not working for me, you know what I mean? It's just a job, isn't it, John? Yeah. So, you know. Are you making a real habit though to close your circle or keep it as it is because I'm sure people are and not not in a bad way but there's more opportunities for you now and more yeah. people want to get involved are you yeah. very conscious no my circle just stays the same okay yeah if, 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 if I'm a proper like a quiet like I am quiet and I'll observe everything you know yeah. if I meet someone new I'd rather them speak and let me observe them before I speak yeah and you can't just say your circle's going to stay the same and you're not going to let anyone in. Yeah. I think you, have, I think you really do have to be cautious because, you know, yeah. 
what what's what's people's motives you know yeah exactly. do you know what i mean it's like that's why m me and my friends we just we still stay the same we, we still go out and one of my friends was actually just saying before like about one of his mates was like saying that he just goes wherever like the 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 the, the the it guy is at the time, right. whether it be, and he was like, yeah, he yeah. was uh, he was texting me saying, oh, like I'll I'll, I'll get out with you and that, and my mate was like, no, you won't, you're, you're not our mate. It's like you want to come out with us now just because Darren's, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like what I think is as well as last year I had three fights didn't I, John? Yeah. Sweden, Rotterdam, and Poland. Now not many people came to my Sweden fight and then some more came to Rotterdam. Then everyone was there for Poland and then after yeah. Poland when everyone who never came who said they would come would text my mate saying when's the next one will come. My mates were sort of like, well, why didn't you just come to Poland? Like yeah. it's sort of that thing, you've got to be very, very yeah. cautious with people like that. Yeah. Not saying that everyone's fucking wanting to be a mate for, for a motive, but yeah. 90% of people are. Yeah. If, if we're just gonna call a spade a spade, we might as yeah. well, you know what I mean? Yeah. <coughs> and what this is where I grew up by the way. Okay, what's, yeah. what's this area called? This is Walton. Walton, yeah. okay. So I grew up, not not this is like the little back part, like I could take it past my street if you want before we go on our yeah, food. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. My street, mate, where I grew up. That'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, with, with, I bought my first dog from that pet shop. You bought the dog from the yeah, pet shop? Yeah, my That used to be my barber's, my dad used to take me to when I was a kid, Winoski's. Yeah. Oh, there, so yeah, we can only see the Winos, But yeah. Winoski, he actually emigrated to Australia. That's the story there. He did a shit haircut though. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so this we're going on to now is County Road. This is where I used to hang around when I was a kid with all my mates and that. Right. So this is like where I'm from. If you just go down left there, mate, left here, yeah. So now we're going into like where I properly grew up. And what was, what did young Darren Till look like? What were you and your mates doing? Were you on like we mountain were just, bikes? Yeah, or, mountain bikes. Or? This this, used, this is the bingo now. This used to be the bus sheds. So this used to be just a wasteland and we'd all make ramps with our bikes when we were kids and I'm saying proper kids. That's why my knees are so scarred and we'd jump up ramps, fall off our bikes and my mum would always call me in for dinner like eight o'clock and I'd never come in for eight, I'd come in for ten. This wasteland here, there used to be an old school. This used to be the old St. I went to St. Francis de Sales but the older one where all our parents used to go to was right in the middle here. So like we used to hang around in there, you know, when it was built. Yeah. And now it's obviously been knocked down. That was the shop I used to go to. That was another barber shop I used to go to. That yeah. never used to be a shop. That used to be a pub. You go right here, mate. This is my street I grew in, Delamore Street. The Delhi Mob. The Delhi Mob. The Delhi Mob. Is that what you and the boys used to call yourselves? No, it's just like a little name. So you stay in the middle, mate. I'll show you the house I grew up in, though. And was it was it like a good strong community around these parts? It's okay, everyone sticks together, but it's rough as well, you know what I mean? It is a bit rough like. So if you stop here, right here, that's the house I grew up a bit further. 99 Delamore Street. No way. Yeah, that's where I grew up, mate. Right. One of my best friends used to live in 114 here in Solheld. Uh, it used to be like just a proper tightly knit street. This like in summer everyone would be on the steps and I honestly thought it was funny, everyone would have like Frozies, you remember Frozies? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'd be, I'd always, I used to play footy when I was a kid. I'd play footy against this wall, and I'd permanently bang the ball against the wall. And she, and uh, Donna, <laughs> Donna used to live in the house. She'd come out and scream at me. Yeah, I used to live there, mate. Someone's in there now, and they don't know I used to live there. So yeah. like, I could knock at the door. One know? day, you know, there'd be like yeah. those blue plaques in in London. Have you seen it when someone famous has lived in a house? Really? They put a really? plaque on the wall. I'm there not, could be a. I'm a not plaque. famous, mate. Maybe someone could do it, but I'd never want them to. So was your bedroom at the front or the back? No, that was my mum's, and then my bedroom was at the back. And when my mum used to grab me when I used to be in trouble, I'd jump out my back top window. So I thought it was a big fall. I'd jump out and I'd run along the wall <laughs> to get it to get out of. But you know what I used to do? Actually, this is a funny story. When she used to grab me, I, I wouldn't like go out to cause mischief. I was actually going out because I used to love running like at midnight. Really? So I do midnight runs on my own around the park and there. Do you still do you do running now? Oh, I always run, but Are me, you, right. yeah, me the, the way I run is uh, I'll get to Carbon a half an hour earlier. Oh, I, I think road work is really good. Okay. So and in the cold as well, like you really feel like you're doing something that your opponent's not doing, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, Mike yeah. Tyson said it yeah, best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'll get to Carbon like tomorrow night I'll run 
run on the road and I'll obviously get into the gym and do my training. But yeah, I used to always. Oh, kid, you were running. Yeah, I was running, mate, always. Because I started when I was like 10, so you got to yeah. remember that. As much as I was causing mischief, I was still training. I was still a kid with a dream and a goal. Yeah. This is where it all started, mate, because I'll never forget. For my birthday, my birthday's on Christmas Eve, I went and bought the Rocky box set. Now, the Rocky box set nowadays must be cost about father. Yeah. But back then, it cost 50 quid in right. HMV. And I bought it. And I swear to God, I must have washed that a million times. Each one. It, it was Rocky 1 to 5. Six of them came out, yeah. And it's when you were 10? I must have been about 10, 11. Right. And I used to watch it in my back bedroom. And my dad bought me some Everlast hand wraps. Yeah. And I'd put them on. Never told anyone this, by the way. And I'd just shadow box in front of the, the, the telly. But you know when the music was coming on? Yeah, oh, yeah. So I'd be watching it. And the music coming up, I'd be like, right, that's it. Do a little bit of boxing. And I'd be like that to me, Dad, take me to the gym. Like, we'll go past the gym where I first ever went in a minute. And my dad used to go and lift weights. And I'd just be like hitting the bag and that. And one of the guys in there, Ozzy, his name was, he was a kickboxer. He'd teach me a few things and that. And I'd just be like, I was just a little kid, mate. What was it about fighting, though? What was it that watching the Rocky Well, this street, I had loads of fights in the street, on the street. Like, I was a little street fighter as well. Were, like, your friends, were they all fighting now or like as in boxing yeah, like every, everyone around here like if you see some of my old mates now they can all have a good fight like we were scrappers right. you know what i yeah, mean yeah, yeah. and like i just you know what i always wanted to be the hardest kid in the street it wasn't about the football then as much as you were playing you didn't want to play for no i would like i played football was my life at that point but okay. i also i loved footy but i also wanted to be the hardest kid on the pitch okay yeah it was always a thing with me like I, this might sound bad, but like a masculine thing, like I wanted to be the hardest kid in in the street. Yeah. And I, I don't know why, but I just wanted to be. Yeah. Maybe for like purposes, maybe to s protect my mum or whatever. You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. sometimes I think of it like this: Imagine if you've got a girlfriend or you've got a daughter, and someone mistreats them. Mm. You've got to be able to protect them. And the man's nature is is fighting you know yeah. what, what do men think of first when they're having an argument somebody think right it's a fight now yeah, yeah. so i want to be able to know that i can just beat anyone so i know now when i'm in my car and someone's giving me road rage i don't need to say anything because i know i can beat that man yeah. in a fight yeah. maybe it was something to do with that ego was there an, was there a trigger was there like a moment where yeah like i people say they've got tempers i have got the worst temper you've ever seen my temper is uncontrollable that's why that's when I did get stabbed, it was like, I got stabbed and I still was trying to fight the whole club. And when I say the whole club, I mean the whole club. Like it took the doorman a good few hours to get me out of there. When my temper goes, mate, it's ridiculous. I've got a temper. But you seem like so And when chill. I fight, I'm so calm. It's, it's mad, like, it's like it? in the cage, I'm calm. <laughs> I'm calm and I don't need a temper. But on the streets, my temper's ridiculous. That's so bad. it's like a, a, a balance, if you'd say, because yeah. when I'm in the gym, you will never see me get angry or anything. It's just all about calmness. Like you could say maybe the flow of waters, Bruce Lee used yeah, to say, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So like, I don't know where that's from, because you'd think if he's tempered in the street, he'd have it in the gym. No, never. Yeah, so a bit of a hothead. Um, bad temper, but n n the last time I can remember getting full on angry was years ago. Like I never get angry. If I'm driving, I, I had a guy the other week I was driving called me a prick and that and he was ready to get out and I'm just like get, stay in your car mate do you know what I mean yeah. like, I was with my mate the other week Chris this was the other month sorry last year and uh, I, I'm, like, I'm like a bit of a I'm a cunt on the road like I'll cut people up and I'll do bad things but <laughs> I know when I'm in the wrong so I've cut some fella up and like uh, he's with his missus and that and he's in the passenger seat and then he's shouting at me and I just went okay and I said like that I went I'm sorry and he was like going crazy. Yeah. And my mate's like ready. To, my mate's like, we'll get out the car. And I said, son, we won't do nothing. So then this fella is in the car and we're stopped at the lights and he takes his seatbelt off and he's ready to go to the car. And I went, shit. So I popped my head out the window and I, made, I went like that. I went, mate, if you get out this fucking car, I will kill you. And he went, look, because sometimes with fighters, there's a sense of energy that you feel from yeah. them. Yeah. And that's all I had to say. And like, he, he just like sort of, oh, you dickhead. But it's like, if he gets out that car, it's bad for everyone. Yeah. First of all, it's bad for me because I've got no UFC, no more. Like, yeah. not if I get cut, but it's bad for me. Yeah. Then it's bad for him because I will fucking kill him stone dead. <laughs> so, do you know what I mean, yeah, mate? And it's yeah, not yeah. me being like, but no. us as fighters, especially it, it's different MMA fighters. 
we can take on the world. It's like you put any MMA fight against a boxer, he wins. Yeah. It's not. And I started in boxing. Yeah. But all we have to do, it's it's like if I was to fight with Anthony Joshua now, everyone in the world who doesn't know about proper fighting would say Anthony Joshua would win. I'd single leg him and choke him out. Yeah. So he doesn't win. Yeah. Exactly. And that is the truth. What would happen? Stipe versus Engano. I mean, they're two MMA guys, but. Mm -hmm. Finds a way, single legs and single legs and weighs so him down. That MMA to me, I, I always talk about it. It's so fucking dangerous. And Brazil was an eye opener to me, John, because over there the national sport is like jiu jitsu. So you could be walking along the street and a guy you think's just a little nerd could be a black belt. Mm. And it happens on many occasions. I'd be like, my mate at Joe used to train with him when he was a kid. He's amazing on the ground. I'd be like, he just looks like some little skinny dude. Yeah. And you could cause a fight and he would strangle you to death. And it's the same with wrestlers. Like, Sometimes I look at Grundy out the gym and he just, Grundy just does not look like a fighter. His ears are a bit of a giveaway. Thick neck giveaway, but he's just a mean. nice guy. Yeah, 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 you could yeah. feel yourself into thinking that he's just doesn't know anything about a fight and that man would pick you up so high and dunk you on your head and yeah. it's like <laughs> it's dangerous isn't it mate that's what, i mean i say that about myself i'm so dangerous you and are people <laughs> but you you but change no, your jitsu any what? normal person john you single leg them you're choking them they yeah, don't know how I, to defend that yeah when you like you guys are spending three times a day down the gym yeah. no one's doing that but like, drilling no. techniques to hurt people even even a lot of Fighters, I don't think are actual fighters because I see what we do in Carlin and I know a lot of other gyms don't train like we do. Right. I know, like, if you could say now out of England, I know there's other gyms that do, but I know it's a small percentage right. to the people who actually want it. Because, you know, when someone says to me, and I have this conversation with Terry Etam all the time, who's the guy I look up to, when people say they want to be a fighter, Terry will always say, but do you really want to be? Because mm. I've seen what Terry was put through and yeah. what I've been put through with Colin, and I think... You've got to be fucking mad to want to be like a, f a fighter. Yeah. No, you know the Khabibs and and people can say what they want to say about Connor, like he likes to go out and party. But the man puts work in. The man's oh, yeah. a hard worker. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And the Cormiers and the John Joneses and the Ronda Rouseys, like, do you really want to put yourself what they're putting themselves through? Because mm. on tele television, it all looks glamorous. Yeah. In the gym, mate, it's not fucking easy. No. Like. I was terrified to come to the gym this morning because I missed causing me death. Like, I was in the dentist shaking, writing Colin a message. I know we had to be there first, like, Colin, this will never happen again. Like, because, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm terrified of that, man. It's a coach student, a proper coach student relationship. Yeah. As much as you two are pals as well, but he's the guy you go to. He's the guy I go to for everything, and he's the guy I would never even whisper back to, like, a mm. reply. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I'd reply to my nan or anything. If I dared reply to Colin, I know he'd kill me there and then. <laughs> yeah. The only time I ever did it was in Rotterdam, cutting weight, and I was in the bath on my last kilo, and Colin made the bath hotter, and I went, Colin, what are you doing? And he grabbed me and went, don't you fucking speak to me like that. And I went, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'll cut the weight. Oh my God, really? Oops, it's yeah. like that. Listen, like, honestly, there's no man who puts the fear of God into me like Colin. And Colin knows it, like, Colin knows it. Like, yeah, yeah. And I just look up to Colin like, like as a proper master, like when people say, oh, he's me coach, I think, no, he's not. He hasn't got the relationship what I've got with Colin. Do you know what I mean? I don't know who that is. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he shouted at me when Isn't I was a kid. <laughs> uh, but like, Colin puts the fear of God into me. No one in this world does. Yeah. I'm not scared of anyone. Yeah. I'm terrified of Colin. There's always one guy, right? And he says to me, yeah, if we sparred, you'd probably get me now because I'm old. And I'm like, I wouldn't because be, I'd be fucking afraid to touch you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mentally, is that scene yeah. there. You wouldn't be able to do what you want to do. Yeah. Should we go to that gym that you were talking yeah. about? Yeah. It's like an old church or something, isn't it? Or... Yeah, it was an old church. Right. I don't, it, I don't even think it's a gym anymore, but... 1898. 1898, is that what it says? Yeah, on the wall down there. So, from where I live, I used to cut down the streets, and when sometimes my dad would be in work late, I'd just come here, and I didn't do anything. There was no coaches or nothing in this gym. Like, it's a small gym, and I'd just hit bags. And that's where it stemmed from, just hitting bags. Like, I think I used to just take my aggression out on the bags, because I hated right. I hated my mum that much for grounding me. Right, right. <laughs> but, like, this is where it started. So. You said your dad went to the gym. Yeah. Back in the day, going to the gym for like our parents wasn't. It's not what everyone did. So no. was he? Was he quite athletic? Is he well, quite no. sporty? Or nowadays it's more health than that. Yeah, Every, exactly. Everyone's worried about what they're eating. Aren't yeah, they? But yeah. I, I like. I know I'm not old as in you guys, but I'm still. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are old bastards. Yeah. <laughs> but like, my dad was a big guy. Like he had a belly and that on him. But I think it was his like sort of sociable thing to do. Like. Right. So we'd go, we'd lift weights, but to be totally honest, it was more chatter. 
I'd see right. all of them chatting. Like yeah. you go and call one on if one if one of us even speaks a word, we're dead for it. Really? Yeah, like Colin in Colin's class, there's it's like silence. There's no music. It's silence because it's we're there to work hard, mate. You yeah. know what I mean? Like we really yeah. hard. Like right now, I miss training small. As soon as, as soon as I'm back in with Colin, mate, like I don't even think I'm allowed to go home. I think I'm just in the gym all day. Do you know what I mean? But like. My dad used to come here, he'd lift weights, but it was never not on like training hard. Right. He'd chat. Everyone in here used to just chat. They used to work the jaw right. more than they'd train. But it was like a social club. Yeah. And for yeah. me, I used to just like hitting the bags. I was 10, mate. I was a 9, 10. And like I started training Muay Thai. And then that's where it sort of stemmed for me. Like I, I got kicked out of school and that. And I was like, do you know what? In fact, I don't want to do all this job shit. I don't want to do what society thinks I should do. Mm. And I sort of thought, I'm gonna be a fighter. I mate, it took years and years of no money, nothing. And I used to just say to my mum, listen, I'm not in it for the money. I wanna just be the best. Mm. And she used to be like, but you know, you could go and get a job. And I'd be like, mum, and I had this mentality from a kid. If I go and get a job, that means I'm not fully committed to, to train. And that means there's a plan B. Like I haven't got a plan B. I've no, always had this. Enough. If you ever see a fighter and Let's say they've got degrees and that, which I'm not hating on all plan B. I think to myself, you don't believe in yourself that you're going to get to the top. Mm. See, with me, there's no plan B, John. I don't know how to do anything but fighting. Mm. Anything. So that's how confident I am that I'm going to be a champion and be the best. If there's a plan B in my eyes, you don't want it as much. Mm. You know, and I've been like that since a kid. I was always telling myself, there's never going to be a plan B. Because I remember my mum made me go to college, Hugh Baird College. What were you studying? What did she Public you services. Okay. Yeah, and I just left after a few months. I was like, this is shit. I am not, like, made. I'm not cut out. I remember going on a few jobs with my uncle. He's an electrician. That was shit. I done maintenance in, in a in, in an old people's home. Shit. I went with my dad on a few jobs Thailand. Shit. And I was just like, I don't want a plan B. I want a plan A, because plan, plan A will work. And I knew what I was put here for, to be the greatest. And I'm just so confident in it. I say it without even... There's no flutter or stutter. It's quite a, um, it's a great, it's a great thing to have worked out so young. Like even with my career is doing the broadcasting. I was, when I first started with the UFC, I was still an electrician. But I said to myself, I'm never gonna make this, I'm never gonna make this work until I get rid of the safety net. I have to quit that job. Cause it won't fully have me. And I'll always be one foot in, one foot yeah, out. Yeah, well exactly, this is what uh, I've seen this so much with fighters, John is that they train of a night and they have a job of a day. You ain't gonna get nowhere doing that. The only exception I'd say to that is Demetrius Johnson. Most probably. It was, it was, the, only, it was the only time, because I, I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. How now and then a guy comes along like Demetrius. He's a freak of nature. Freak, and, honestly. But yeah, I remember speaking to him and he would say, yeah, I used to like, split the job. I used to, mm. I need to provide for my family. I'm like, Damn. Do you know what John be, being say and this is not going to come across cocky I think I could have done it because I think I know how talented I am at how I pick the game up like mm. you need to remember I've only been training MMA now for five six years that's ridiculous like do you know I'm already off seventh ranked in the world and mm. it's you know I'm, I'm to be unbeaten in MMA is something as well like I'm 16 yeah. and all like, yeah. no one's been able to beat me yet and there will come a time when I get beat probably I, I don't think there will but it's just another thing, and it? it's like I've been training six years in MMA, and I'm 16 and all, and I'm seventh ranked in the UFC. I'm 25. It's like sometimes you have to step back and think, "Fucking hell!" Do you know what I mean? Like there's guys who've been training for years, and you know, there's some guys in Carbon, I, me mates as well. They've been training for years, and they just haven't had that right moment. You know what mm. I mean? But I think you've got to give your all if you're going to do it. You can't be exceptions of me just Johnson. There's loads of fighters in Liverpool who I see holding down a job and training thinking that they're going to get to the top and I just I don't give me opinion on it but they're not it's that the probabilities of winning an MMA are so small yeah, as well it's mad as you said John you can get a technician like me and then you can get a brawler and the brawler could beat me mm. Platinum Perry could beat me now I think I'm way more technical than him but he could land one on my jaw and beat me mm. that's why MMA is so interesting Yeah. because 10 times out of 10 that would not happen with Floyd Mayweather I haven't got Twitter, Snapchat or Facebook anymore. You don't Mate, it's too much social media, John. I know. You, you go on your phone, mate, so if, if we have you go on your phone and you've got Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, and you find yourself going from each yeah. of them. 
What the fuck are we doing with our lab? So on my phone right now, I have all my unread messages because I don't reply. I have my WhatsApps, I don't reply. And I have Instagram, and I don't fucking reply. Because it's like, I, I want to spend as much... Is that your only page on your... That, and then I've got like... Oh, you got a couple of bits I've got a tap and fart, so when I'm in an elevator, I use that just to, just to make the situation awkward. I just don't give a fuck. I've got eBay because I love eBay. I've got my banks. Uh, and then I've got like the, the shit. general shit that I just don't even use. But that's, mate, that's nothing, is it? Nothing. You I keep it simple. I keep it simple. Instagram is my money maker now. So it's to let people know the journey is until And I've got sponsors and, you know, I make a bit of money with it. Fair yeah. play to them. But it's going to be kept real. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And apart from that, mate, I don't want to be sitting there going from Instagram to Snapchat to Facebook, to, which I see everyone doing. Funny story. So I go for food. This is three nights ago. Me and Miguel, and we sat on the table in Nando's. This is no word of a lie. Our, our phones were in the house, and next to us was two lads, about 15, 16, across from each other, both like this. And I seen the lads on my side go from Instagram to Facebook to Twitter to Snapchat, and his mate do the same, and they both. And next to us was a couple, a girl and a lad, same, both on the phone. And then I looked across some girls just going through Instagram stories, so and I just went, and I felt like I was the, the one in, like, who was a misfit, but I'm not. Like, what the fuck has society become like? We're getting it, like way off subject here, but no, no, this is what it is about. Like I, I just don't know. That. And what's what's crazy about that is this. That's your generation. But like, for me, right. yeah, 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 exactly. Like I'm gonna. I, I can't even say a little, sorry to me a little bit past because when I was 17, I didn't have a phone, so I am in that generation. But I'm so also a little bit past it because I think that the ones before me were 22 and 23 now yeah. in that generation yeah. I'm 25 so I'm a little bit past it but I'm still in it yeah and it just it's just a different way of communicating and you burn time you burn time John. and it I'm guilty of it you I'm know guilty of it because I'm thinking should I be using this in some way to, to, to do good or like for work purposes yeah. or whatever it might be but really and truly what Here's a, here's a question. Why do we post photos on Instagram? Do we feel like we need to tell the world? Because what did you do before Instagram? Yeah. You, you, you couldn't tell the world. Right now, I post photos. To maybe to motivate people. Because I like, I like yeah. posting photos. Yeah. But then you get people who, 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 who feel a need to post about their daily routine and their... Like, some people can't go for food without taking a photo of that food. Yeah. Like, I think to myself, I can't do it the other occasion. I actually done it yeah, yesterday yeah. for the first time. I'm okay, yeah. But what's, what's going on with the world? Like I seen a guy the other day, he ordered a coffee and, and was going. He took three pictures to get the right image and I'm like, come on, man, what the fuck are you doing? And yeah. that's just me, John. You could yeah. sit there and disagree. No, anyone can, anyone listen or whatever. But then, but, if he's if he's in that world, it might be right for him. But I do think we spend a lot of time Looking at it at another perspective as you are, like, that could be... That could but be his gig, yeah. I just think that the world's going in the wrong direction. For sure. Like, For sure. like and I promise, I promise when... I've got a baby now in Brazil, obviously, but, you know, if I have more kids and whatever, blah, blah, they, they will be getting brought up the way I got brought up. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like Playing outside. Playing outside, getting up to... Like, I want my kid to make more mistakes than I made. Because at the end of the day, it looks... I'm not a bad person, I've got so many defaults, but it's made me a good, I, I hope so, a good man. So yeah. like, you know, you see kids now, we were, another funny thing they did the other day, I seen these bunch of lads, they must have been like 14, all going together to like, to Nando's for food, and I thought, when I was 14, I never had money to go to Nando's, like, yeah. my, my, my little thing was like, I had about three pounds, I'd go to the Mackey's, get like a Happy Meal, and I'd be out all day on no food, doing, I'd get vandal grease on my hands, like how my nails were dirty, my knee. and that was, that, that's what being a kid is about, go and explore, yeah. like I can like, play. play, I can happily say at 25 I've explored half the world, I've been, I've been to most countries, no there's loads I've got to, but I've been, I've been around, I've played out, I've been on my bike everywhere, and I'm at 25 and I'm still getting the fucking bus, and at 35 I haven't got a car, I still get the fucking bus. <laughs> People think like that you get to a certain level and people like, why is that until on the bus? Because I fucking need to get the bus. This isn't no, like, I think this is necessity now. Like, the bus is needed in this time. I'm not paying no taxes either, and I'm so anti-social that I wouldn't sit there in the back just speaking to a total stranger. I don't like it. Right. So I'd rather just be on the bus in my own little world, getting to my destination. Yeah. It's very simple, mate. Yeah. Honestly, and I just look at the world from a different light. Maybe you've probably never seen this side of that until, but... 
I just don't like the way the world's going. I really don't. What would be like a w one big thing you do to improve stuff? If, if I could change the world, which I'm never going to do, I'm just one person, I want to change the people around me, I want to change myself, just, just just stop thinking the world owes you a favour, because the world doesn't owe anyone a fucking favour, mate. What's important for people to understand about you? If there's something that you would like to... Something but I'll sum it up in what I don't give a fuck. Honestly, it might sound uh, no, I like it. drastic. I don't give a shit. So you know what I do say I would fight a heavyweight? That is the truth. Going in there to fight in Ghana, okay, maybe I will get killed. When I say killed, I mean killed. But I don't give a fuck to do it. I would do it. That, that, if I want to say something, I could care less. And I think that's how you need to be, mate. I, I could care less. I could care less what people... Like, listen, mate, I love buying watches. I love buying chains. But you take it all away from me, I'm still going to train as hard as I do now. That's the thing with me. I don't care. I'm prepared to have no money and to have money. Yeah. That's the difference with me and a lot of people. Yeah. Just, I, if I can sum myself up, I don't give a shit about nothing and no one. That's how you've got to be, mate. I've spent more than a year away from my daughter. And listen, it's not neglection, it's right. She's there with her mum. And we don't, we're, you know, we're split up. But her mum is a diamond. The best mum ever. Uh, I'm, monthly I send over what I'm meant to send over, money-wise, and, you know, FaceTime, this and that. But I said to Colin the other day, can I go to the business? not yet. We're still working towards something, and he's like, you know, either go and see your daughter now, or in a few years after that financial settle for it, and for your daughter to know that you were a great champion. I was like, okay, then, Colin. You know, sometimes you see fighters, oh, I, sp I had to spend a week away from my family. I think, shut the fuck up. Like, sh shut your mouth. Like, shit happens. You know what I mean? Shit does really happen. So, I know that at some point I'm going to see my daughter better. But for right now, I'm not going to see her. And it's not going to make me stronger. Because shit like that doesn't make you stronger. It just makes me miss it a little bit. Yeah. But I'm not going to act like I'm hard done to. You're at peace with it. I'm, it I'm, I'm it okay. You know, like, when uh, who, who interviewed me the other day when we were down at the thing yeah. and uh, he was like, does that motivate you being away from your daughter? And I was like, no. I was like, it, like no, when I had her, I didn't all of a sudden go, ooh, everything I do now is for her, because it's fucking not, it's for me. I set out to be the greatest for me, around me, yeah. I want my daughter to never worry about money or whatever, but I'm not doing it for her, I'm not doing it for fucking anyone, I'm doing it for myself. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. people have kids and they automatically assume that their life revolves around the kid. No, go and have your own life, like, love your kids, but love yourself as well. Do, do you know what I mean? And that's, you know, people get it in their head, oh, I need to do everything now for my daughter. When I'm a champion, it's for my daughter. No, it's fucking not. When I'm a champion, it's for fucking me. That's just the same. And people might disagree. Disagree with me, okay? But, that's but it's a great byproduct, isn't it? When you become a champion, by default, a lot of stuff's going to get taken care of. Yeah, a lot of stuff. And when I say my daughter and my future kids will be financially secure, I don't mean that they're going to get money given to them because they're fucking not. They'll get pocket money like I got and they'll go out and get a fucking job and they'll go and learn at school and if they flunk out of school, yeah, well, they do that and I'll, I'll try and convince them, but if they do, they do because i done it and it did, you know, mate, I had more than four teachers say to me, yeah, you, you, and this is the truth they said, yeah, you're, you won't make nothing of yourself. I'd love to see them now because I wouldn't be cocky or anything, but I'd just look at them in a state of like, school's not everything. Because it's not. There's, there's, teach, there's school teachers right now who I am way more intelligent than because they're academically intelligent. But what can they talk about surroundings, the world, the, the knowledge of, 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 of the world? That, that to me is intelligence. And I'm not saying I'm an intelligent guy, but I see the world in a different light. Do you know what I mean? School's not everything, mate. I did not finish school. I did not do GCSEs. I'm doing okay for myself. Yeah. And I feel like I've got a good head on myself. Like, I'm not like a guy who's got an opinion, who's got like a, a think something and then I think, well that's, that's the way I think and everyone else is wrong. Like if you said to me now, well I disagree then, I'd be like, okay John, we'll change my opinion on that subject. You know, some people they think, it's this way and no one can change, they don't want to listen to anyone. I'm a guy who'll go, well, you know what, if you're disagreeing, change my opinion on the subject. I think that's how you should be. Yeah. It's like, people have always got advice, people, people have always got something to say, an opinion or they know best. You might know best for you, but I know best for me. It's like, I, I eat out every day. I'll go out for food. I like to go out and look at my choices. Because some days I might feel like a steak. Then the other days I might feel like something else. 
So I'm not going to go home where I think, oh, there's fucking hell, there's only cereal at home. Or there's only eggs and bacon. No, today I feel like a steak. So I will go eat a steak. I don't, I don't care about the price. I want the steak. That, that's just me. I could be living life wrong, but it's the way I'm living. And I tell you what, I wake up a happy man. It's a tough life though as a fighter. So those little things like that, to be able to reward yourself like that now, is important. Important. I like the fact that I get to the gym and I think, you know what, I'm going to train really, really hard now because I know after, after that I'm going to go for a nice little steak. And that'll get me through the training session. Oh, right. Yeah, I do things like that. Or I'll think I'm going to train really, really hard now because I've seen a pair of trainers and I like them. I'll buy them after training and I'll think, OK, train fucking hard. And then go buy them trainers. Yeah. And sometimes I'll do that. Well, it works. Because I fucking train hard, mate, let me tell you. Do you do, have you got any routines? Are you like a... No. Nothing like that? No. Everything's just... It's, it's my days are literally like that, and I'll go, well, I'll do this, I'll do that. Sometimes I'll try and plan my day, like, shit, I'm going to do this and that, and then I go, you know what, I can't fucking be arsed. I'm going to, to sleep, I'm going to have a snap, a nap. That's why I could never be a nat a father. You know what I mean? Yeah, it just doesn't fit. Me and my uncle have a funny joke with each other, like we say, he always says to me, I couldn't do what he does, like his job, it's the hard and that. And then I stop to think and I go, 99% of people on this earth couldn't do what I do. But if I wanted to do his job, I could. That's a good point. I could. If I stopped and said, I'm going to be the best electrician, I could. Yeah. Could he do the same about my job? It's, it's, it's touch and go. Yeah. Who can do that? Who can come to Carbon every day and have spars with heavyweights and t torn MCLs and get hit and have no teeth and, do you know what I mean? Wake up with bad hands every day. Who can do that? It's not many, John. No. And even fighters can't do it. Some people just want to appear to be a fighter. Who's an actual fighter? I know loads that appear to be fighters. Do you know what I mean? And it's not just like, physically the training. It's that like your body can get so broken that you, you know, but you get, it's the mindset. It's, men, it's the mental side, mate. Like, it's, it's, so humbling, you've got to get broken down and build yourself back and then go back. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I'll I, I put it to you this way, this is the, the scariest thing for me. Because you probably think when I'm going into a fight, I look confident as ever. I'm fucking shitting myself. You can imagine now for eight weeks going to bed at night thinking of your opponent wanting to beat you. That is terrifying. But when you have a fight on the street, there's no time to think about it. It happens and after you go, whoa, the man is going to... It went from more to the hundred and like, whatever. Imagine training every day knowing that there's another guy training to beat you and hate you and you've got his picture in your face. That is terrifying. That's the scariest thing about fighting for me. Do you keep those pictures, are they just mental pictures? Do you, do you have cut outs? Do you watch? No, so you, that's you bullshit. No. I just think... Rocky did. Rocky did. <laughs> Sorry, Rocky. But, you know, I just think to myself, it's fucking scary, isn't it, John? Fighting's a fucking animalistic thing. Like, it's fucking scary, mate. It's the scariest thing on earth. But can produce the most elation that you're ever going to feel. Yeah. The, 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 I'll say it again. You'll never ever find a better moment than when your hand gets raised and all eyes are on you. For that, for that moment, you're God. For that moment, that one moment, there, ten seconds, you are God. You definitely have a personality trait that has allowed you to 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 follow a tough road. Yeah. You know, you've you've done stuff early. Like I couldn't imagine being eight. How old are you? 18? I was going 19, to, going on 20 when I went to Brazil. Not knowing a language, not knowing anyone. No. You got told to go there, you trusted that decision. I have no idea how I would, whether I'd sink or swim. Yeah. But I didn't. You know what I mean? Were you scared about it or? No. Back to it, John. I just don't give a fuck. I could care less. Like, this is the truth now. A lot of people say I'm prepared to die. I don't care about dying. I care about you, you around me. But you know, will miss me. Right. But, I, you know, people say sum yourself up. I sum myself up to regards that that until does not give two shits. So when Colin said to me, go to Brazil, if he would have said that to anyone else, they wouldn't. They'd be thinking who they're leaving behind, the mates, the parties, the family, the life they've got here. It's, it's called comfortability, John. The comfortable. I just was like, well, if that's what it's going to take, well, okay, let's go then. And I was there then the week after. It's all about being the greatest. That's what they're It's not about anything else, mate. Listen, John, I fucking love money and I love, I'd love a 60 grand watch right now. But it's not what motivates me. I want to be the greatest. 
I don't want to be a champion. I don't want to be a two-weight world champion. I want to be the greatest. So that means being a three-weight world champion. That means doing things that no one else done. That means taking fights. Uh, not caring who you fight. Not trying to have the easy road. That's why I say I'll fight Gunnar and Perry. They're both coming off losses. It doesn't make any sense for me to fight Gunnar Nelson. But he has got a style that needs to be beaten in my eyes. Until, until I can call myself a true martial artist, I need to beat every other martial art. Gunner, Perry, Tyron, Corby, Dos Anjos, Lola. I'll name them all, because if Dana says to me, now you're not going to have to go through all them, I'll say, okay. Because when you believe, you're willing to do that. When you don't believe, you want that little easy road. Corby wants that little road to the title. Usman does. I don't. Why did, not, why did Usman not call me out? He says he, he knocked me out, he beat me. Call me out then. If you want the guy to beat me, come and beat me. I'll accept it. If you beat me, I will accept defeat. I'll come back and I'll fucking kill you. But if you beat me, I will accept it. Like a man. No excuses, no 30%. No, I just wasn't ready for your wrestling. No, when you're fighting, you need to be ready for fucking everything. That's why I respect wrestlers more than I respect myself. So, if Usman's the guy to beat me, well, come and beat me. If Corby is, if Tyron is. If fucking them middleweights are and them light heavyweights are, come on then. I am ready. When I was speaking to Colin earlier, he was telling me how you're not even close. We haven't seen close to your 100%. We haven't seen you kicking. Now, a lot of people that you haven't said this, <clears throat> Colin told me this. You've come into your last few fights and you've had knee issues. Three fights with knee issues. Like, you know, I tore my MCL before the only fight. I did not know. I t my MCL was tore. Like, it's better now, but I tore my MCL before the Sony fight. I'll tell you this, do you want to hear the story? Go on. I'll tell you the story, mate. So, four weeks before the Sony fight, on a Thursday morning sparring, I was on fire, mate. And when I say on fire, there was dead bodies lying in the gym. And I, I went to throw a kick, and one of the guys come forward with his elbow, and my knee stopped and swung over. So my knee came out of place, oh. fell to the ground, jumped back up and said, no, let's go, let's go. I couldn't even walk, my knee was wobbling. I sat down in the cage and I cried my fucking eyes out on my own. Colin got me ice and just left me to it. He told me to go home on the Thursday and come back the Monday. For that weekend, I was so fucking depressed and sad. But I came back Monday. Do you know what I'd done on the Monday? I, I, I went and had a run on the treadmill because I knew I had weight to cut and I'd gained a few, a few pounds over the weekend. And Mark Scallon, do you know Mark? Yeah, yeah. He fought UFC, he was like, no, no, get on the bike, this, that, dude. He was worried about me, he's one of my bestest mates. And, you know, everyone thought in the gym that I wasn't going to fight Sony. The only guy who knew was Colin, because Colin knows what I'm like. I, like, I was, listen, I was fighting and I was fucking fighting. The Jess and I are fight. I snapped my ankle over, I went over on my ankle, snapped my ankle over, I bone chipped. Wrestling. The boy and fight, I, uh, I. I sliced me, me, me foot open, had stitches, couldn't kick. Couldn't even balance on the other foot. You find a way. Oh, yeah, here's a funny story for you, John. Everyone's gonna fucking laugh at this. The other day, the, at the moment, it feels like whatever the UFC talk about, Dan Till's name gets mentioned. That's what it feels <laughs> like. like. There's just guerrilla emojis everywhere. Yeah. So they put out on Twitter, when I was on Twitter, who's the most well-rounded guy in the UFC? And you know what the, the, the most comments were? Could be even me. And I sat back and I was like, how fucking much have I blacked everyone? In a sense that, mate, my ground game is shit. My wrestling is shit. And I haven't even kicked anything. I've beat everyone with a left hand and everyone's saying I'm the most well-rounded. Just to tell everyone, I'm not. I'm not. But you just think I am. I, I blagged me way to this spot, mate. I'm, I'm a blagger. I'm a top blagger from Liverpool. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you've got to be down to the head with this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know, that's not to me that anyone could take me down because who was it? Someone was talking about we haven't seen Till's ground game yet, and I was like, yeah, because you just can't fucking take me down. Like, it, it's a simple thing. Like, I can't remember who said it, but it was like, yeah, well, we haven't seen Till on the ground, and and I felt like saying, because no one can take me down, and when they do, I bounce right back up. Like, I don't have any doubt that Usman, Woodley, and Corby will take me down, but I will bounce back up. I'm so fucking strong and good at my get ups, I'll get back up. Then what are they gonna do? Then it's my time. I will break them inch by inch. It's very simple, mate. It's pretty exciting to think that we've got a lot more to see from you. That kicking game as well, with your background. It must I'm, be... I'm a better kicker than a puncher. Well, that's what, yeah, that's what I've been hearing. Yeah, I'm, 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 
like without blowing my own trumpet, I can kick phenomenally. Like when I start properly kicking, I'm just gonna be breaking people's arms and legs and head kicks. Trust me, mate. This Cerrone fight was just a little dwindle. Yeah. We're looking at this. Yeah. I'm young and I don't give a fuck. What's the next stop on the journey? John, I don't know. I don't know when I'm gonna be champion. I don't know how long it will take. I don't know how many years I'll fight till I say, you know what, I've had enough. One thing I do know is I will be the greatest fighter of all time. That's just all I can tell you. You know, people have plans. I remember Andy Ogle, trained with us. Ogle, yeah, he's actually a prison officer now. Is he? Yeah, snitch. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, he had like a plan that he was going to do it this, this and this in this amount of time. And I think, well, what if it doesn't happen like that? Do you know what I mean? Like, I had injuries, I had setbacks, I had obviously that thing before Brazil and that. You can't give yourself a timeline, you just need to know what you're going to do. And I know I'm going to be the greatest. Whether it comes in five or ten years, it will happen. I am, I'm so confident of it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I just, I'm confident of that, mate. Well, it's been a fascinating morning. Spent a little bit of time with Darren, went back to his neighbourhood, saw him right back where he grew up, which was fascinating. I've been lucky to spend some time with Darren. I've commentated on a few of his fights, but actually speaking to him whilst he's at home in Liverpool and just seeing how, how relaxed he is in his own environment, it's a bit different to fight week. Sounds a bit odd, but as a 30 something year old man I'm often really taken aback by the maturity and just some certain personality traits of young athletes and young people around the world and Darren is definitely one of them he's got such a unique take on life and certainly there are elements in his personality that, that I could do with the fact that he doesn't care too much about what other people think he's very single-minded he knows what he wants very focused I think it's a, a certainly an attribute that a lot of people would like to have and you definitely need to have if you want to be the greatest fighter of all time we saw an, a more relaxed Darren who is not in the throes of fight camp with the pressures that he spoke about again very honestly about fearing being beaten by his next opponent every single morning he doesn't have that right now so he's walking around without a care in the world trying to sort out car insurance and you know paying this off and organizing certain other bits and pieces so it's really nice to see someone when they're totally relaxed in their own gym in their own space their own town uh, just passing time waiting to get the call where Liverpool and the docks has created hard men before it's certainly created another one in Darren and um, I'm looking forward to seeing him put in some hard work tonight as well in the gym No, you haven't ever, you dirty little bastard. Get in a top look. No fingers in ice. I can't identify anything that would make him 
specifically be the way that he is. What, what do you think it is? Because he is different. He is, he's, he's different. His quest for greatness is absolutely bulletproof, isn't it? And his single-mindedness. Yeah. Whenever it is, yeah. it's inevitable, isn't it? And it's like nothing, nothing negative has seemed to have really been a catalyst for that, which is great. I don't like hearing bad stories all the time. You know what? Any negative around them doesn't affect them, other than his single-mindedness anyway. Yeah. So one might be a little naysayer in the corner saying, oh, well, he's got a good right now. Straight over. Yeah. He said I he am. doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't give a fuck. Whoa. I don't know how honest he was about his upbringing and his childhood. He's not had an easy childhood. Right. He's, you know, he's a product of the society where he was brought up in. Right. So he's, he's quite a rough part to live through where you got to be tough to survive or do you want yeah. to become a victim. Right. He's no one's victim. Yeah. So I think that's stood him in good stead. Make him mentally strong to give him that toughness and say, fuck you type attitude. And I think if he's honest, the way he's been brought up has made him the man he is. Right. Plus, his natural ability. Yeah. Um, he's skillful as well. We're talking about mental strength, physical strength, oh, no. his attitude. But he's very, very skillful. Oh, no. We're in a um, down camp, you know, we can see he's, he's got a cold right now. And um, I just said he hates the camera being on him, and you were like, I actually like this. Yeah. Because it's probably torturous for him. Torturous for him, he's got a to, to, to the stress situation again that we speak about. So his fight instinct kicks in, even though he's out of camp. Yeah. He's still got him in a stressed environment and he wants to excel. Yeah. He's angry yeah. that he's tired, he's angry that he's sick, he's angry that you're sitting here, he's angry that I'm sitting next to you watching him and talking about him. Yeah. I love it. If you could have it his way, be pissing in all the corners of the room. This is my spec, this is my gym, who's coming in, who are you? I'll have a piece of you, please. He treats everyone the same though, so if we do get a foreign fight to come over, he's not like I'm done telling the UFC. Yeah. Just hello oh, mate, how are you? Bang, let's hit you in the face. Yeah. Let's see what you're made of as well. Yeah. And if you want to hit him back, he's happy with that. Yeah. He loves that. So what you see is what you get with him. Anyway. He's an alpha male, I guess. He likes his territory, he likes to know who's in it and likes to test himself with everyone who's around him. Yeah. That was, that was intense, man. Just the way that Colin sets up the training here is just, just the environment just feels almost uncomfortable and super challenging. And Darren is, he just has his energy. As soon as he's squared up to the pads, you could really just see that he meant business. And even then, when I was just talking to him about it, just everything is with such intention. It's. He's considering the fight the whole time and what works, and it's not just about fitness or anything else. And he's, you know, sadly for him, he's got a little bit of a virus at the moment. But that was, that was intense. Yeah, I, I felt that. I enjoyed that watching him, him at work. He's, uh, he's a very special athlete, of course. You know, we, we kind of know that, but they definitely train a bit differently here, and I, I really like it. I like the environment. I like the respect. It takes me back to traditional martial arts times and everything is designed for success here. And these guys don't want to train or coach people that don't have absolute commitment and want to make something of a fight career. And that is, uh, they've tuned it up that way. That's where they're creating champions. You apologize like a bitch. <laughs> It pisses me off, right? Because I'm the only one dying off the pads on the floor. Dying and everyone else is walking around fresh. You, you don't like pads hard. Only recently. Yeah. Golly was saying that he smacks pads hard. But what? Thank <laughs> you.